Dear students, today we will be discussing about aspects of wind data. Primarily, we will be discussing wind data analysis, wind well distribution, estimation of wind energy and power density duration curve. Now, as far as wind data analysis is concerned, we must know some basic information. For example, what kind of instrument is used for measurement of wind speed? Okay. It is a anemometer, mostly van type anemometer is used in most of the cases. And also, we know this velocity is having both dimension and direction, right. But in our case, more what we are interested about the magnitude of the speed. Okay? That means, direction of wind is not much of interest and this wind velocity at any location varies rapidly and continuously and the variation being irregular both in terms of period and amplitude. If I drive velocity variation with respect to time, it may be minute and maybe wind speed here, which is in meter per second. Okay. So, this may be of different division 1, okay. maybe 2, 3, 4, maybe 4 maybe 6, maybe 8, maybe 10. Okay. So, if we consider the variation with respect to this 8, it may be can something like this. It will be something like this. These are fluctuations. Okay. These turbulent fluctuations are occurring continuously with occasional gusts causing peaks and valleys. This is peaks and these are valleys. Okay? And this represents a typical variation of wind speed with time. So, what I would like to conclude from this, we are mostly interested about the hourly variation of wind speed. Okay. Sometimes also we are interested about monthly variation and then yearly variation. Okay. So, that means, we want the mean over 1 hour interval of time. Right. So, that is what we are interested about. Okay. Now, let us discuss more into it. First, let us discuss about speed frequency distribution, then speed duration curve and then wave distribution. Right? So, these two are investigated based on the available data. Okay. Normally, these data are found from different meteorological centers located in the country. Right? If I have to install a wind machine where no data is available, then how to proceed with that? So, it is found that there are various models which are available in literature and among all this Weevil distribution that is statistical model is found to be the best in estimating the wind potential of a particular location because it gives the similar distribution what we found in terms of actual data. Okay. For annual frequency distribution curve, it looks something like this. Vertical axis indicates frequency in percentage. Also, sometimes we are interested about how many hours. Say for example, we can indicate 1 to 2. 2 to 4 maybe, 
then 6 to 8 these all are in meter per second these are velocities ok. What we are concerned about say for example, January how many hours this wind speed is available that is more important for us and at the end in a year how many hours wind speed of rain 6 to 8 is available for a particular location. So, these informations are required for designing a wind machine. Even to here in the plot you can see these are values at 5, 10 and maybe 20s, but what I mean to say this is something like 4 to 6 this is the range at which we get this kind of wind distribution ok. So, of course, we will take the mean while doing the calculations and this figure take care of the frequency versus wind speed and that is how it is known as speed frequency distribution and the plot is given for annual frequency distribution of hourly wind speed and this is required to study the characteristics of wind speed available at a particular place. Now, what we are interested about speed duration curve, it tells about the relationship between duration and wind speed which is in kilometer per hour. So, you can see here the variation of wind speed with respect to the duration. These two curves are related and these two curves are normally used for analyzing the feasibility of installing a wind machine. So, if these informations or data are not available then what we will do we will go for a statistical model which is normally weevil distribution ok. That is how we can write annual frequency distribution or annual speed duration curve is useful for assessing the overall suitability of a place from the point of view of locating wind machine. Now, let us study the statistical model which is weevil distribution. Why weevil distribution? Because this distribution fits measured distributions with a reasonable degree of accuracy. So, expression or you can say probability distribution function can be written as f v is equal to k by c in bracket v by c k to the power of minus 1 exponential in bracket minus v by c to the power of k. What is c and what is k? k is nothing but we will save factor and c is scale factor. So, how do you visualize this shape factor and we have scale factor. So, if we plot it something like this we have density maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 these are the graduations and then we will have And scale 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, it may be 1, and this is time, maybe in second. So, I am going to demonstrate how this shape factor influences. Say, for example, if we consider a value of 0 0.5, so it will be something like this this is something like k is equal to 0 0.5 and if it is somewhat like 1 then it will go something like this. This is k is equal to 1 and if it is say 2.4 it will be something like this and if it is 5 so this will be something like this. 
So, this is k is equal to 5 and this is 2.5. You can see while changing this values of k, you can see the shape is changing. Okay? So, that is how it is called shape factor and by looking at the shape, we can find out which distribution the equation is following. And in case of scale factor, so here again we will have this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 8, 1. This is again time. And this is again density. So, here so this is for point two, this is 0 0.4, this is 0 0.8, 1.2. So, here what happened? It maintains the shape, okay? but only change will be spread, spread will increase. right? So, here scale will increase, but it remains the shape remains the same. right? So, that is how we can see the difference between shape factor and scale factor, but by looking at the distribution we can find out which distribution the equation is following. So, more on this we will distribution. So, this is the distribution function and if we are interested about say average and standard deviation measurement of any system. Say for example, if we consider say n number of measurement, n is the number of measurements made. Then average is normally represented by say average velocity is v bar, which is nothing but 1 by number of measurements and then n number of i to n summation of then v i. Okay. This is what we do for average calculation and for variance sigma square which is nothing but 1 by n minus 1 summation of i is equal to 1 to n, then we have v i minus v var square. Okay. But in case of oval distribution, we can find out this v var and sigma square by doing stepwise calculation. So, it is something like gamma 1 plus 1 by k and sigma square will be v var square it is a gamma function 1 plus 2 by k gamma square 1 plus 1 by k minus 1. What is variance? And this C and K can be calculated by simultaneously solving this equation 3 and 4 for a location under consideration. Okay. So, of course, we have to take help of this 
equation fine. So, this is how we can do the calculation, but of course, we can solve it and derive it to get b bar and sigma square. Since this is not our concern, so we are skipping the derivation part. So, we will now take one example to find out what is c and k and then how we can find out the velocity distribution. The wavell distribution is something like this. Then what we are primarily interested about cumulative distribution function which is nothing but capital F v and then we need to integrate the function from 0 to v then what we get is something like this and in order to solve this problem let us consider e v is equal to b by c to the power of k which is something like d u is equal to k multiplied by v by c whole k minus 1 multiplied by 1 by c d v. So, if v is 0 and then u tends to 0 and v is equal to u then u tends to u. Okay? So, if we use those expressions and use the we will distribution function then f v is found to be something like 1 minus exponential of minus b by c to the power of k. Now, here if f v or f 0 if we consider that means v is 0 then f 0 will be 0 and if we consider f infinity then it will be 1. Okay. So, in reality f 0 will not be 0 since there will always be some hours at a place with 0 wind speed. Thus, there is a small deviation of the Weevil distribution from the actual situation at an near 0 wind speed. Right? So, let us now solve one problem. So, problem goes something like this long term wind on wind speed is not available for a location. Say, for example, location is Kimin in the state of Arunachal Pradesh, India. The government has decided to install a wind farm at the location. In order to assist the wind potential and select suitable wind machine, a large number of discrete measurements of hourly wind speed are made over some representative day for a couple of years. The measurements yield the following values of the average wind speed and standard deviation of something like V average is 6.23 meter per second and standard deviation is 4 meter per second. The annual wind speed frequency distributions are to be investigated under the assumption that it is a Weevil distribution. So, in order to solve this problem we need set of data say for example, gamma function table we need to use. So, now this problem goes something like we have average values of velocity is given as 6.23. So, V var is something like C gamma 1 plus 1 by k. This is equation 1 and then we will have variance is V var square then gamma 1 plus 2 by k gamma square 1 plus 1 by k minus 1. Okay. This may be equation 2. Right? So, these two equation has to be solved simultaneously to find out the values of c and k.
ok. So, I will just show you how this can be calculated. Say for example, if we are interested to measure say gamma 1 plus 2 by k ok. If we consider the values of k is equal to 1 ok. So, this will give something like gamma 2. So, this is 1.5 and this gamma 2.5. So, this gamma 2 value is in between here. So, in order to find the gamma 2, we need to take help of interpolation. Okay? So, we need to find out through interpolation. Fine. So, by doing this calculation, it is found that this k value is 2 and c is 7.04. Okay. So, now our next step will be to find out what will be the distribution. Okay. So, already we know the expression for this is k by c then v by c k minus 1 then we will have exponential of minus v by c to the power of k. Okay. So, we substitute these values k and c at different values of v, we will find out what is the probability distribution. right? So, if we substitute these values, then how it will look like f of v say here is k is 2 say c is 7.04, then we have v then 7.04, then we have k minus 1, 2 minus 1, then exponential of 1 minus v by 7.04 to the power of 2. Okay. So, we have the interval of 0 to 1, then we have 2 to 3, then 3 to 4. Okay. So, in that interval we need to find out what is the probability distribution function. Okay. So, now if we consider this range that means average values will be 0.5 in that range average values will be 1.5. So, if we substitute those values here say for example, f of 0 0.5, 2 by 7.04, then v by 7.04, this is 1, then exponential of this v is nothing but 0 0.5, 1 minus 0 0.5 divided by 7.04, all square. So, then we will get a value. So, this value is something like 1.750512, right. So, that way we can find out for other ranges. So, as per my calculation it is found to be something like this. This is the table I have generated by using spreadsheet Microsoft spreadsheet. And then I try to plot it. So, it is something like this. Okay. So, this is nothing but annual speed frequency distribution right and this is the frequency in percentage right so we have compared this shape with the measurement what is available to us so this shape is similar to the measured distribution and only deviation is that the weevil distribution does not indicate the calm period okay otherwise this distribution can be immediately apply for finding out the annual speed frequency distribution.
right. Now, let us move to the energy content in wind. So, how we can calculate the energy content in the wind by considering the wind speed is v meter per second, the power density that means the power per unit area normal to the wind and which is nothing but the kinetic energy per unit area. Okay. So, which is given by P by A is equal to half m v square. So, already you know m is equal to rho into v that means, it is continuity equation right, it should be mass rho a v. So, mass flow rate is rho a v. So, this is something like we have rho into v because p area is this expression is divided by the area. So, that is how it is half into rho into v and this is v square. So, finally, it will be half rho v cube. Okay. So, that means p is something like half m v square. So, something like half rho a v again v square. So, if I take out p by a this will be half rho v cube. So, that is how it is there and this is equation 1. Where rho is the density of the air and v is the wind velocity. density of air and v is the wind velocity. Okay. Now, next is once we are done with power density, we are also interested about the energy content in the wind. So, how to calculate the energy content in the wind? So, it is something like the energy contained per unit area for a specified period which can be find out something like E by A is 0 to T P A d t. Okay. So, this will be something like half rho 0 to t v cube d t. Okay. Since the data is available on the hourly basis, the equation 2 can be written as summation. So, it will be something like on monthly basis say for example, to 1 to. So, n m is the number of hours in the month v i 3 then d t. this is for a month. Okay. Number of hours in the month. 
okay and v i is the hourly wind speed and delta t is the time interval time interval of 1 over ok. So, now if we are interested about yearly energy content of the wind that can also be calculated. So, it is something like E A by A is equal to density summation we can use so, I is equal to 1 to N A and this is V I cube del T. Okay. So, this may be equation 4 and here N A is the number of hours in a year fine. So, this is how we can find out the energy content per square meter area in a year. Okay. Also, this wind velocity varies with height. Okay. So, if we know the wind velocity at a particular height, then we can also find out the wind velocities at different heights by using a law called power law. Okay. So, this is something like V proportional to Z to the power of alpha. Okay. So, here Z is the height and alpha is power law index. Okay. So, this can be further expand. So, this may be 5. So, it will look something like V 2 by V 1 is Z 2 by Z 1 to the power of alpha. Okay. And uh, this equation is valid up to 100 to 150 meter from the ground and also we must know what is alpha has to be known has to be this alpha is very very sensitive to the place like roughness and then suppose wind is blocking. So, all the aspects to be considered and we must know what is alpha. For your understanding I am sharing this value of alpha. So, alpha value will be about 0.1 for a flat plain land. with no obstruction. And its value varies from 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 for a moderately rough surface or rough terrain. And for rough terrain, its value varies from 0 0.25 to 0 0.4. Okay. So, if we take an example, say at a height of 33.3 meter velocity is recorded to be say 12 kilometer per hour and 
if we are interested to measure the values at a height of 60 meter, then how we can do it? So, we can consider power law coefficient as 0.1. So, very easily we can do it, right? So, V2 will be V1 multiplied by 60 by 33.3 to the power of alpha, right? We can substitute the values of V1, which is 12 kilometer per hour, 60 by 33.3. So, based on the situation, we can use the value of alpha here may be 1. So, we can find out what is V2 at different height, which will be in kilometer per hour. Okay. This is how we can use this power law equation. Okay. Now, let us consider a situation of calculating energy content of wind per square meter to be calculated for the month of May at a height of 10.9 meter from the ground. So, data is given to us for all the 12 months also annual is given. Okay. So, we need to use density of air as well. So, let us calculate the energy content for the month of May. So, how to proceed? So, I have extracted the data of May months. So, 0 velocity is there, then 0 to 2 is the percentage is how much is given here for different wind speeds. So, now we will calculate E m by a already we know the expression like half of rho summation of i to n a then v i cube and we have delta t right. So, that is what we have shared in the last discussion here is the delta t. Okay. So, now we will use this expression for estimation of yearly energy. So, here half density is 1.2 yeah, multiplied by. So, May, May month is January is 31, February is 28, March is 30, April is 31. May is 30. Okay. So, we can have 30 multiplied by we have 24. So, this will be something like 720, right. So, that means 30 multiplied by 24. So, this is Mars is 31, this is 30, this is 31, right? Correct. This is 31. So, this will be 31. So, this will give a value of 744, right? So, this multiplied by will have what is the velocity here? This is 0. So, anyway, we are not considering here. This is 1.6, this is in percentage. So, 100 will be here. Okay. This multiplied by velocity will be 1 kilometer, right? Because 0 to 1 average is 1 cube. So, that way we will have 0 0.9 divided by 100 multiplied by 3 cube, because here average is 3. Then we will have 1.3 divided by 100 is 5, then we have 1.3 to 2 by 100 is 7, then we will have again 
divided by 100 into 9, then plus this is done 3.900 into 11, this is done 4 by 100 multiplied by we have 13, then we have 6.3 divided by 100, 15, this is done, 6.2 divided by 100 multiplied by 17 cube plus 6.5 divided by 100 is 19 cube plus 10.300 into 21, then we will have 7.4 by 100 into 23, then 8 by 100 multiplied by 25, then 4.3 divided by 100 into 27, then 5.1 divided by 100 is 29, then 7.5 100 is 7.5 divided by 100 is uh, we have 31, then 4.5 by 100 multiplied by 33, then we have 5.7 by 100, 35, then we have 4.1 divided by 100 is 37, 1.7 divided by 100 into 39, then we have 2.2 divided by 100 into 41 cube plus 0 0.8 by 100 multiplied by 43 cube plus 0 0.7 by 100 into 45 cube, right? So, this is not required. So, at different uh, wind speed, we will have different uh, frequency data. So, once we do the calculation, then uh, what we get will be something like uh, 8, 2, 9, 8, 6, 2, 2. So, we can see the dimensions kg per cubic meter is the density, then uh, hours because we have converted to hours multiplied by we have kilometer cube divided by h cube. Okay. Now, what we want is in kilowatt hour, kilowatt hour per meter square. So, in order to do this, then what we will do? So, we will convert this kilometer to meter okay so 1 kilometer is 10 cube meter right okay so and then 1 hour is 3600 second okay so this will remain because i want kilowatt hour so if we do something like this then kilometer cube will be something like this. So, it will be 10 to the power of 9. So, 8298622 into 10 to the power of 9 will be in meter. So, it will be kilo means it will be 6. Okay. Then we will have 3600 cube. right? So, that means it will be kg meter per second square 
Newton, then we will have meter, Newton meter joule, then we will have joule per second is watt. Okay. So, kg meter per second is Newton, Newton meter is joule, then joule per second is watt. Okay. So, this is watt. So, this 1 meter remains here. So, meter meter 1 meter gone. So, it will be kilowatt hour per meter square. So, if we do the calculation, it is found to be 177.9 kilowatt hour per meter square. This is this is something like the energy content in the wind. Okay. So, this is how we can find out the values once we know the data for a particular period. Okay. Now, let us move on to the power density duration curve. So, the energy content in wind can be visualized by plotting the power density duration curve. Right? So, it is something like P A proportional to V cube. Right? So, if we plot it, so it will generate this kind of curve. So, this is the power density duration curve here and values are represented here. So, for example, if we consider three different values A, B and C on this axis, this is the power density values and if we expand it to a point of intersection of the power density curve, it will meet at D, E and F. Okay? So, here if we extend this curve here and here. So, there are three different speeds, cut in speed, rated speed and cut out speed. So, now we are going to introduce these things and also we must know the total area under the curve represent the energy content in the wind for a year. Okay? So, these three terms like cut in speed, design speed and cut out speed. Cut in speed is the speed below which the machine does not rotate and no power is produced. Okay? Design speed produces its rated output. Usually, the output is held constant at the rated value of wind speeds. And cutout speed is the speed at which it is advisable to shut down the machine in order to avoid mechanical damage. Okay? So, here what you could see this is the cut in speed and this is the cut out speed. Okay? So, beyond this even though we have some potential we cannot use it. Okay? So, this is some kind of losses. This is cut out so, this energy even though potential of wind is there, we cannot use it. Because of the rated speed, we need to operate the machine at the rated condition, okay? at constant speed at rated condition. So, that is how this energy can also be wasted, cannot be utilized. Okay? So, the actual energy which is available is given by the area like this area, this shaded area and this is something like K E D Z H, this is the area. Okay? So, that means, even though we have potential of energy, sometimes we cannot harvest fully because of the different condition and mechanical issues associated with a wind turbine and this is valid for both horizontal axis and vertical axis wind turbines. Now, let us summarize what we have learned today. Primarily, we have analyzed wind data and we have studied annual speed, frequency distribution and 
speed duration curve and we got idea how this can be applied for designing a wind turbine. If sufficient data is not available, then we can go for some kind of statistical model. Among all the statistical models, we will distribution is found to be one of the best and we have demonstrated one numerical examples to strengthen the understanding of we will distribution and how this gamma function could be utilized in solving a probability distribution function of win. And also we have covered our discussion on power density duration curve where three speeds are very very important as far as functioning of a wind turbine is concerned. I hope you got a good fundamental knowledge required for designing a wind turbine. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you. Thank you.